Natalie Mills here, and this is my cinema presentation of Still Alice for my Psych 110 class. Alice Holland is the main character of Still Alice, a film directed by Richard Glasser and Wash Westmoreland, based on a novel written by Lisa Genova. Alice is an accomplished linguistics professor, wife, and mother of three. Unfortunately, Alice falls victim to early onset Alzheimer's at the age of 50. The film follows Alice and her family as they try to adapt and cope with Alice's continually deteriorating mind, as well as understand what this means for her children who could potentially inherit this genetic disease. So to diagnose Alice with Alzheimer's, according to the DSM-5, to diagnose someone with major neurocognitive disorder due to Alzheimer's disease, they must meet, they must meet these criteria. Evidence of causative Alzheimer's disease genetic mutation from family history or genetic testing, and then all three of the following must be present. present. Clear evidence of decline in memory and learning and at least one other cognitive domain based on detailed history or serial neuropsychological testing, steadily progressive, gradual decline in cognition without extended plateaus, and then finally, no evidence of mixed etiology, i.e. absence of other neurodegenerative um, or cerebrovascular disease or other neurological, mental, or systemic disease or condition likely contributing to the, the cognitive decline. Okay, diagnosing Alice with Alzheimer's. Evidence of causative Alzheimer's disease, genetic mutation from family history or genetic testing. Since both of Alice's parents had already passed away in the film, they could not test the parent for the gene um, that caused her early, set on, um, early onset ID, AD. However, Alice did test positive for the AD gene um, as well as her daughter Anna who got tested and they came to the conclusion that Alice must have gotten the gene from her father. Okay, there must be clear evidence of decline in memory and learning and at least one other cognitive domain based on detailed history or <coughs> serial, serial neuropsychological testing. Um, Alice does go to a neurologist um, multiple times in the film and she does take multiple tests um, that tell her that she's having a decline in her cognitive ability and memory. Um, so the first um, signs of Alice's condition in the film that lead her to go to that neurologist include a short-term memory slip of the tongue during a presentation that she was giving, and that is immediately followed up by her getting lost on Columbia's campus during a run. And she was a professor at Columbia, and it seemed that she ran a lot there, so it was weird that she got lost on camp campus, obviously. Um, in a scene in her classroom, Alice seems to not be able to remember what she's supposed to be teaching, uh, which is later in the movie followed up by a superior of Alice going over student reviews, claiming that her lectures were hard to follow and that Alice herself would seem to get lost in them. Um, steadily progressive, gradual decline in cognition without extended plateaus. Um, in the film, Alice reads her daughter Lydia's diary, and when Lydia confronts her about this, Alice claims that she did not know or really understand at all what she was reading. Um, the day after the confrontation, Alice apologizes to Lydia for hurting her but cannot remember what she did to make Lydia upset. Um, and so there, I think the main point is that she could, she didn't understand that she was reading her daughter's diary. Um, yes. And then Alice's husband is eventually seen um, picking her outfit out for her as well as dressing her um, with the clothes that he picked for her. This is Lydia, her daughter in the film, and this is her husband. There must be no evidence of mixed etiology, and Alice is not diagnosed with any other neurodegenerative uh, or cerebrovascular condition in the film. Uh, film review. At the beginning of the film, I was not so sure how accurate the portrayal was given it quickly dove into Alice's AD. Um, but after finishing, I feel Julianne Moore did a great job of her role and brought her character's early onset Alzheimer's to life. In the case study I found, a 35-year-old woman was found to have early onset Alzheimer's. So Alice being 50 with early, at on, early onset ID, although rare, it's not impossible. Um, Alice's disease is genetic. She passes it um, to her daughter, daughter Anna. Um, and there is a genetic reality to AD when it comes to passing of rare genes that lead to AD, as well as common and easily identifiable, identifiable genes. And finding these genes is important in trying to hinder impending AD symptoms. And um, so it's good that they found the 
um, AD and her daughter Anna. Um, still Alice also portrays the lack of a cure for Alzheimer's as Alice is on many medications but there is no hope for her to ever get better. Um, but as the reality of having AD, although new technologies are being researched when it comes to nanotechnology therapies. Film reflection. Um, the very quick degradation of Alice's memory and cognitive ability was hard to watch, but given Alice was a woman of high education, that would be the uh, reality. And her neurologist during the film mentions that um, the struggle Alice's family went through is completely understandable, as is her spouse's confusion and how to deal with his wife becoming a completely incoherent and different person. Um, and in the studies started right after that, cited right after that sentence um it's about how uh just spouse's mental health um spouses of people with dementia uh is mental health and how those who stay in their relationships um have a decrease of uh feelings of guilt and burden it actually increases their mental health to stay with their spouse um i enjoyed watching this film regardless of the emotional distress it put me through i did few, shed a few tears during this one but that's just me so nothing new um i am interested in working in geriatrics or specifically with patients of dementia and their families so this was a good choice for me it gave me insight on the symptoms and progression of alzheimer's along with a look at the mental duress the patient and their loved ones are forced to go through um as the film does depict Alice planning on killing herself at a certain point in her memory decline, which um, she keeps track in her phone and she leaves a video on her laptop for her to watch later, um, which tells her to like take pills and go to sleep, which she ends up not doing. Um, and there are also m many other just emotional moments for her family. Uh, Still Alice is a realistically somber film about early onset Alzheimer's that show me what victims and families of those with AD have to face mentally and physically. Thank you.